Hey there, Circuit Gamers! In today's video, we're gonna show you how you can easily hook up a Nintendo Switch to Circuit.tv and let anybody play it online remotely. For this setup, you'll require a Nintendo Switch, a capture card, a Trinket M0, four pin cables, a Raspberry Pi 4, an SD card to power the Raspberry Pi, and a micro USB to USB cable. Keep in mind that for this setup you'll require a Nintendo Switch, not the Lite version, as we will need to use the dock connectors in order to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Nintendo Switch. You'll also need a soldering iron or somebody who could help you solder since we need to attach the pins to the Trinket M0. You will also need to set up the Raspberry Pi with the Circuits SDK and set up the initial game page. But assuming you have everything set, let's go and hook up your Nintendo Switch to the internet. Alright, so first things first, we gotta set up our Trinket M0. So the, the reason we're using it is to emulate a controller for a Nintendo Switch, allowing our Raspberry Pi to send commands like forward, back or pressing a B or A button. And what we have to do is install the correct firmware on the Trinket M0. So first things first, we go to our documentation site, docs-beta.circuit.tv, and then we're going to go to the ready to run example games. We are going to open the Nintendo Switch game template and here we are going to start following the installation. So first things first, we gotta download the firmware for the Trinket M0. And now here's what we gotta do. We gotta take the Trinket, we gotta plug in a micro USB cable into it. And then I'm gonna plug the Trinket into my computer. And now it's gonna start booting. So what will happen on your computer is you will see uh, a new uh, USB storage pop-up, but currently it says Circuit Pi. This is not the one we need. We need to see the boot, parti boot partition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the reset button twice on the Trinket. And let's see if something will change. There we go. Now it shows us a Trinket boot partition. And all I have to do is drag the file we just downloaded, the NS Gadget file, to the partition. Uh, it will now reset and restart and we have our Trinket ready. The correct software is now on the Trinket. Now that we have our Trinket M0 firmware installed, what we have to do is solder these pins in order to be able to connect the Trinket to the Raspberry Pi. Which is why right now we are at the soldering station. Now I was taught how to solder just today. It's my second time soldering something, but it's much easier than you would have think. Uh, so I got everything here. So basically the main things you need is the flux, the tin, and the soldering iron. Nothing too complex, so I'm gonna position my trinket so it's easy for me to install or solder the pins, so to say. Just putting them down. Now, the pins we have to connect are the, the ones that show ground and battery and reset and three and four, so these five. So I have five pins uh, to solder, and now I'm just connecting them to the right position. There we go. Just going to make the thing fold somewhat. And now I think we are ready to start soldering. So first things first, we're just gonna put some flux on the pins in order for the tin to connect, collect, co connect correctly. Oof, my English. Now we get some tin and our soldering iron. So first we get a little bit of tin to our iron. Look at those fumes going out. And now all we have to do is put the tin next to the mat to the pin. This is easier as you can see my hands are shaking like crazy. And there we go. We just hold it for a couple of seconds. That should be pin one, hopefully. Now let's connect pin two. Alexei, have you ever soldered before? Negative. All right, so now that our Trinket M0 is all set up, we have the pin solder, we have the firmware installed. All we gotta do is connect it to the Raspberry Pi. So first I'm going to connect four pins directly to our Trinket M0. Let me just hook them all together. And now 
uh, once that is done, we have to connect it correctly to the Raspberry Pi. So the ground and the battery are the first ones we connect. So we plug them to the ground and the five volt pins of the Raspberry Pi. And then the next step, we have two signaling cables. So we just swap them. It's RX and DX, I believe, pins. We just swap them and we connect them in reverse. And, oh wait, I think we connected the ground to the wrong pin. Let's just fix that quickly. Alexi's like, how long, how hard is it to connect four cables? Very hard. There we go. So now we have all the pins hooked up and we have them connected on both the trinket and the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is able to power the trinket and also send the signals. Now that that is done, uh, we are going to plug in our capture card to the Raspberry Pi. And assuming you've set up your SuRTG SDK already, we are going to plug the SD card to our Raspberry Pi and we will power it on uh, using our power cable. So now the Raspberry Pi is booting and when it boots, we are going to set up the Nintendo Switch game template already onto this Pi. Okay, so now that our Raspberry Pi has booted, what we're going to do is go to our game dashboard, open our robot configuration, and now we're going to press continue and start setting up the Nintendo Switch template. So in the game type, all I have to do is select the Nintendo Switch. As we're using a USB capture card in this case, I've selected USB as the camera type, and now I'm just going to press continue. And as you can see, the controller is connected, which means that the game is set correctly. We're actually going to go to the dashboard page. Let's quickly refresh. And as you can see, both the controller and streamer are showing that everything is good, which means that the initial setup is correct. So now what we're gonna do is hook up the wires from our Raspberry Pi to the Nintendo Switch in order to start seeing the screen and also start controlling the Nintendo Switch. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take an HDMI cable of our Nintendo Switch and we're gonna plug it into the capture card. And secondly, we are going to take that micro USB cable we use for the Trinket Zero. Uh, we're gonna connect it to the Trinket. And the second wire goes to one of the USB ports of the Nintendo Switch. Uh, by the way, something interesting to know, you can actually connect multiple uh, controllers to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, but So you just use a couple more trinkets. Each trinket represents one controller. But you need to know a little bit of Python editing in order to make that. In this specific video, we're just showing the basic setup. Let us know if you want us to look more into the image recognition and how to move how to add multiple controllers in the future videos. So, okay, so now I have everything set up. I am going to preview the screen of the Nintendo Switch on my uh, game dashboard. All right, so we're seeing the screen, but we're actually not seeing anything happen. So we got the game, we got the game screen, but none of the controls are currently working. That is because none of the keys are currently binded to, to the game. So what we have to do is go to the settings page of our game. We're going to go to the in-game configuration. And here on the bottom, you will see how to set different controls. So how to set up the control settings. So we just need the, the WASD in order to go left, right, up and down. And these are actually already set. Uh, and additionally, we are going to add A and B button just for this test. Let's put A as uh, space and let's make B as B key. And now what I'm gonna do is save all these settings. Okay, we don't get any error messages anymore, which means that probably everything is set up for the initial test. So once again, I'm going to preview the game and let's see what happens when I start pressing buttons. There we go. I just pressed the space and it used A key on our Nintendo Switch. And let's actually test that everything is working. So uh, I'm going to open the Mario Kart. Now I'm going to turn on my Mario Kart. And now we have the controller in. Our card just paired to the Nintendo Switch. And now I am able to drive the Switch over the internet. I press B button. I press the button to go forward, left, right, 
using A and D and everything is working. And this is all it takes to hook up a Nintendo Switch to Surrogate.tv. Now that our game is ready, I'm going to stop the preview, I'm going to put the game online and now anybody can play it from anywhere in the world. But let us know what game do you think would be cool to hook up using a Nintendo Switch to Surrogate TV in the comments below. And also if you have any questions, we'll be happy to help you out. Like this video, share it with your friends, and we will see you next week with another build video.